Welcome back to the 2018 College Championship presented by State Farm and Zyrene. Uh, everything going well for Columbia College right now as University of Illinois is trying to recoup, figure out what's going down, and they actually have decided to sub. Yeah, they made a change here. They've gone and subbed out their jungler who, my, oh, he was performing okay. It was just the fact that they weren't getting those ganks off early. And now they have Minsu back in the lineup here over Project yeah. 1. So let's see what Minsu's able to do here. He had played with them throughout the regular season for most of it. Um, actually, all of it is the jungler because Project 1 had been the jungler last year. And then this year he subbed his ADC and he just came back mm -hmm. and took over the jungle role. So Minsu was the person they had been playing with throughout the entire season in the jungle. So you get the audio fixed up for himself. Thank you, Cyrene. Such a gentleman. <laughs> Just making sure that Getting you are. Getting me into the lobby so I can spectate very spectatorly. <laughs> Columbia College feeling pretty good coming into this kind of entirety of the, the college championship. Fifth seed, not feeling too bad, right in the middle of the pack. So it's a little bit of pressure, but obviously you want to win, so you have that hunger behind you. And seeing Illinois as an eighth seed take down number one, a huge amount of momentum. That's what they need to pull back again and figure out a way to kind of attack the mid game of College of Colum or Columbia College because that is everywhere. They just take control. They start getting core items. They start just able to move the map in a way where that one fight is your outer three turrets. Then it's a lane. And the thing they do is they don't. We usually see a team go three turrets, three turrets, we can take something in the base. A lot of the games for Columbia College has been all the way down to an idhib, we back out and we'll do it to another lane. Yeah, and that's kind of the thing I'm, I'm worried about here for Illinois is, sure, you can sub out your jungler and your ganks didn't work early previously, mm -hmm. but the only thing that I think is going to topple Columbia College here is if you're able to beat them in a macro game. And that all starts from the shot calling and even champion select, right? And what you're set up with. And right now, Columbia College, they had side selection. They selected red side for this game, yep. where they had previously selected blue when they had side selection back in game one. So they're changing up the strategy, saying, hey, we really liked having the counter pick and being able to play what we wanted into both solo laners and try to win the game off of that. So I think it's a viable strategy for Columbia College. And if Minsu doesn't change the shot calling of the team for Illinois, then this may just be a 3-0. You kind of get that idea, too, that the jungler has been in the back watching what we have seen Bucksack doing, playing Skarner, playing Trundle, what his kind of pathing is. Has he has he been more aggressive? Has he actually been stayed at looking to protect Julian and Stumpy in the top lane? So he can try to kind of figure out what to do with that formula and help it, help the team uh, as they get through laning phase. Noob and Korean Danny definitely been putting up good fights in the bot side. Maybe start putting a bit of focus there and say, we'll give Zeno and Topopotamus aggressive things because they're great, but let's focus those guys. Let's get Korean Danny going and new. Yeah, and we'll see if that actually works for them, getting Korean Danny uh, going. But so far, it's been Evan RL and Dean who have yeah. gotten the upper hand in those lanes. The Ezreal has been a bit of an issue for them. And we're talking about Columbia College being one game away from being in the finals for the first time and fighting for best college in North America in League of Legends. Columbia College started their program fairly recently in terms of scholarships, but also I look at this team that was built by taking multiple members from the previous RMU lineup, taking Evan RL, Bucksack, Roll Swapping, mm -hmm. the coach as well, and getting Florida State University's star mid laner of Julian. They're just building basically a super team, and to cap it all off, these guys are juniors and sophomores across the board. So if Columbia College make the finals and take it, they may have the exact same lineup next year as well. Absolutely ridiculous. Kind of like from nothing to everything. A great story to be able to tell your kids, right? Yeah, but then you also look <laughs> at the other side too. Korean, Danny, Noob, Minsu, all seniors. Z Zeno is the freshman That's of true. the squad. And so three of these guys We'll be moving on after this year. So this may be their last game in the collegiate circuit. One of those things you get, though, with varsity players uh, moving out, if you would if call them that as seniors, is that you lose that, that leadership. But the guy in the mid lane, the freshman, is the challenger player who's going to be growing with the team. So could be very big things here if it doesn't already happen for them in this semifinal matchup. Minsu to pick, possibly his champion, as we do see the jungle on the map already. And they can do away with showing too much of their hand here in phase one. Braum picked up for Dean. 
as well as Stumpy grabbing, as we said, that trundle. Orin does get locked in. They say, yeah, you have the brum, but so what? Yeah. How well can you block my forge god? As you said, Korean Dandy got the Ezreal. Interesting pick up here to take it away from Evan. Yeah, they picked the Ezreal instead of the Rakan first pick this time. Mm -hmm. And that was the Trundle Ezreal last time for Columbia. But they take the Braum now, saying because Yasuo was banned, we know you favor the Orn. So we're going to pick this very early on so we don't have to worry about it getting banned in the second phase. I like that. <laughs> but now, is it a Fiora into the Orn? Do they pick that here and make sure they have that counter matchup? Potentially. Or you say, we need to pick our ADC here, get the Caitlyn, lock it down, and make sure that no more are banned. But, oh, there's the GP. The GP. So when I looked at Stumpy's champion pool earlier, it was mostly Gnar as his most played with, I believe, eight games coming into it. And then when I went over to his next most played, it was the Gangplank with six. So he's very... Uh, well versed in the champions that are all about controlling the top lane. Yeah, here it is. It's Nar seven games, GP six, and then his next was Camille with two. So it was a big drop off. <laughs> Very familiar with this champion, and this means even two. if you focus the top lane, he can still help out the bottom side of the map, which means they may be focusing Evan RL and Dean's lane. And you were just talking about it, Riv. Maybe they swap up the strategy and say it's no use focusing Stumpy. Illinois, yeah. they need to focus Korean Danny's lane and get him ahead of Evan RL, but the GP will put a bit of a damper on that and something you always have to have in the back of your mind. Caitlyn taken away from Evan RL. We've seen Twitch hovered a few times throughout the day. Tristana played throughout the week. What will it be here for this pickup on the side of Columbia? Two final picks for them. One of them, possibly a Kog'Maw without too much protection. He is going to get locked in there for Evan RL. Yeah, Kog'Maw is still fine with a Braum. It becomes a lane mm -hmm. where if you land the Braum Q or the passive, you can just stack that up. And so I, th I like it. I think it's okay. It means that Evan RL is a late game source of artillery damage. And he was already doing that on things like the Ezreal. Oh. I'm sorry. I ooed because they can still take Julian's uh, Orianna and get another shield in there for it, which was banned out the past few games. Azir gets locked in. Don't worry, not too bad against Azir. You could get yourself mixed up with a bad shockwave if he shuffles out of the way, but we will see what they decide to lock in here. 19 seconds for Columbia College. The cart is being hovered. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, it might, all the Scion. Yeah, yeah it'll, okay. be, it'll be Scion with Banner of Command. And it's one of the things we, I talked about before. When you Banner of Command a minion against Azir, he actually does zero damage yeah. to it with his soldiers. <laughs> so he has to like wait for his soldiers to dissipate and then just auto attack it. And if you're auto attacking it with your actual just your, your little wand, you know, staff, you're not doing AOE damage and clearing the minion wave. So it actually does a decent amount of damage. And then the caster minions of the wave do a lot of damage. So you have to kind of like manage it appropriately. And the Banner Command is quite good into the Azir. And just the Roar of the Slayer and plus Comet does a lot of damage during the lane phase. It should. <laughs> just level E and <laughs> kick minions into somebody. It's so annoying. But it does. Yeah, it does. The Skarner getting knocked out, though. Interesting as well. Minsu in his first game here for University of Illinois. Subbed back in as uh, coming in as a potential starter, we thought. Rosters weren't really locked, but it was Minsu on that list. We see Project One play the first few games doing well. Minsu had a, a time to watch, figure out what the plan of Columbia College was, and now he's in on the Zach. We'll see if he can get the engages going. There he is on your screen. Second from the top on the left side. Minsu ready to get that debut in here. Hashtag UI win, hashtag CC win as Illinois looks to keep themselves alive in the semifinals of the 2018 College Championship. Columbia College are looking to clean 3-0, sweep yes, this, they are. and make the finals for the first time. Got to feel pretty good as that fifth seed. Pretty sure coming in for themselves, they kind of felt like they would be playing against University and then maybe a UC Irvine down the line. Mm -hmm. But here, finding themselves against the University of Illinois, who had a great game against Maryville and are looking to find that once again here in a very much needed game three. Well, it's a little bittersweet for Columbia College because they had a regular season that was undefeated. They oh, could have that, come true. through. This is a good point. As the number one seed. But they lost to Maryville 3-0 in the finals. And I know they were looking forward to getting revenge on them <laughs> in the bracket stage. Watching them lose is okay. Yeah. Right. But now they basically get to thank Illinois and then say, we'll move on to the finals if they just take this game. Well, you don't you get like the linear 
victory yeah. out of this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the transitive property of crushing kids. So you, you, you beat the team that beat the other team. You're obviously better than the team they beat. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so they still. Get That's it. not how it actually works, though. It's a lengthy re revenge. <laughs> <laughs> Julian's having none of it. He's like, stop your emotes. And Julian, let serious, us fight. Serious business. Yeah, absolutely. No, actually, these guys are having uh, a lot of fun when I was passing them between games. Mm -hmm. It's just both teams are actually talking to each other and having a good time. Talk I think it was Stumpy and Topopotamus talking about their Cho'Gath versus Maokai game where it was like, just sitting there going, why can't I kill you? Just back and forth. Uh, tank matchups. Tank matchups bring people together. You spend a lot of time together. Not this game, it's the GP with the Klepto, who leashes on the top side of the jungle. So this will actually put Buckzack on the bottom side come level three. It also means that the bottom lane of the Kog'Maw and Braum gets a push a little earlier. Ooh. Getting up in his face so he can't get any mm -hmm. minions. Wow, Julian taking a bit of damage. He'll be all right. Ooh. And Zeno dodge that. Minion, yeah. yeah, every dodge on the Roar of the Slayer is a win for the Azir in this lane. Every time you can dodge it, it feels really good. Holy macaroons. That's things. Getting the potions up. He'll be good. Just down to the Doran's ring, though, as he goes through all of them. Buck wow. Zack in his back pocket trading, uh, or I'm uh, sorry, going down towards the bot side of the jungle. One hit. Got it. So pretty good farming still from Julian. Yeah, but like... Zeno, it's not fun farming. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Zeno literally got hit by one roar of the Slayer, and that looked like it was like 150 HP off. He hits him with another one here, plus the uh, the Comet. It's like, you can't be eating those in the lane phase. It's just so hard to dodge. Though. He's going to dodge on that one. So, like I said, every little one is a victory there. These here. Dean getting me. Throwing out the Christmas presents. I don't know if any of that sense made sense. Those are nice. But he's still doing it. You are vision or seeing, right? There. Obviously, Cole. Yeah. Oh, you're right. There you go. It's Cole. Be bad in the present. Teleports for our AD carries as well, uh, as well in this game. We'll be seeing that more and more here through the Collegiate Championship. And sometimes you miss that cannon minion, and it feels really bad for their for and Danny because cannon minions have a lot of gold on them, and they actually mean a decent amount. That could be a difference in terms of item spike. But he is Ezreal. So the Klepto will make it up, and then he'll be able to potentially be just kind of even. A Bucksack going onto the bottom side of the map knows that you don't really clear the Krugs. So he'll take that away. TP just using Julian. Ooh, no wards here. So this is actually a potential gank from the Zack. Doesn't have a... Oh, tries to get in range. <laughs> Not close enough. Oh, can't get the auto on. Yeah. But they still get the flash out of Julian. Means repeat ganks are very uh, possible. Also... Remember, Trundle was doing the Krugs here. Zack. Oh. Good vision coming around. He, he placed that just yep. a little bit ago. Bloop. And it's gone. Womp. Yep. So he heads out. And great pressure there. I like that little hook up by Dean, making sure his exit is safe and that Minsu wasn't in the brush waiting to happen. So, Buckzack able to actually kind of get under the skin of Minsu here. Seeing him engage mid, knows he has time on the bot side. 28 to 24. Not too much of a discrepancy between the junglers just yet. Yeah, just that one Krug camp. That's it. Everybody pretty much mirrored everything else. Oh. Oh. <laughs> just being wow. nicely done. That's huge, though, because he doesn't have teleport. And now Julian, the Scion wave clear is crazy. All three of his abilities, actually all four of his abilities, yep. are shielding. in effect. So he's going to shove through. Boom. Pop the shield. And he's just going to clear the wave. And now... I don't think he did it fast enough. Yeah, he didn't oh, do it fast enough. Oh, no. He didn't yeah, do it fast you can enough. see him walking back. Yeah, he didn't He's do like, it fast oh, enough. damn it. <laughs> that's the worst feeling. You're like, come on, just reach it. Or like one reaches it, and you're like, that still doesn't count, man. Come like, on. That's not it. So. so he'll get it there. There he goes. A few will die now, but it will be semi-cleaned up. If, you know, can shift in. Looks like he has enough, and he'll start cleaning up now. So back for Julian. We'll keep an eye on his inventory attack speed, as we expect for Zeno. Keep himself topped up in hitting that damage to Julian in his CS up. Julian uh, looks like early Catalyst. You can go Abyssal Mask or Catalyst and then sustain with that and then go ahead and go for the Banner Command immediately afterward. But his composition 
does have a lot of mixed damage on it. It has the Gangplank for the physical damage and has the Kog'Maw for the magic damage. So your damage palette is complete, as well as the resistance shredding that you'll get from the Trundle from Buckzack. And then Julian is kind of that big tank. Oopsies. Those always kind of suck. That's oh, man. That's now he can just walk through it. <laughs> yeah. Every time he hits you with the E. Every time. Oh, man. He's missing a good amount of minions. But it's all right. He wants to keep it pushed. He wants to be able to affect the rest of the map at some point soon. Tormented Soil and some Dark Bindings coming out. Is finally get a little bit of lane pressure going back and forth. Nobody has really enough to close down on the kill just yet. I'm sure Evan RL and Dean could get that with passive. Man, there's so many teleports on AD yeah. carries now. Or I guess the bot laners. Uh, the marksman taking TP is crazy to me because this isn't even the patch where they have like lower base stats or fleet footwork is nerfed. It's just the teleports get back in the lane because you know they're going to take teleport. I like that's, it. That's just how teleport works. He's more fighting. If they have TP and you don't, you feel really bad. That's how it made its way into top lane. That's how it made, mm -hmm. it way, it's made, made its way into the mid lane. Because I remember it, people were like, oh, Ignite mid laners are better. It's like, well, TP is actually very, very effective in terms of map pressure because it's a team game. And now we saw Ezreal's taking the TP. Or hesitant to give up the heal, but now it's just kind of crept in. And everybody's just taking teleport now on the marksman in the bottom lane. TP is now just taken almost as if it were a flash by laners. It's just like almost a requirement sometimes. Let's do it. Let's just make a boots. Make it something. Make it an item. But I guess then everybody would buy that item. Yeah. You just make it like a very small range. You have to be like in range. My boots or no? can carry me there. I'm just yes. Like, bring scrolls in. <laughs> no, no, no. They've been phased out of game. No, no, no. I, I personally just have an issue with teleport where I just think it's too strong. I know. I, I, That's I why I'm prompting it into items that would always uh, be in the games on right now. No, I'm just saying it's too strong as a whole. Clearing out waves. Top lane we haven't seen too much of. 58 to 52. This usually got a lot of attention throughout these games for whether it was the regular quarterfinals and now semi-final matchup. But here in game three, all quiet on the top front. Looks like Bug Zack is actually going to head away from that. They say, we don't really want to aggress top lane if I show something else might happen on the map. We also don't know where Zeno is right now, if he's fully backed or is getting ready to engage. Looks like they are ready to back here, though, with a true shot barrage on the minion wave. See it, Korean, Danny, and Noob have in mind. And it doesn't look like much of anything. He maybe has enough gold to actually right. get the Monomune. Because your first back should be your tier. Your second back should be your Monomune completion. As the Ezreal. We'll see what he gets. Taking a bit. But deciding. Yeah. He's probably waiting on just a little bit more gold. He's chatting with the shopkeeper. It happens. Yeah. I think Can I just have my item, please? He actually just, just sold. Um, oh, he did. He sold the potion. He's like, it's just a little bit closer. Yeah, he sold the potion. He's sitting there. There we go. There it is. Yep. So, yeah, pickaxe and then five more tick in. <laughs> Good to go. So, Danny making his way to the lane, but this does open up the map a little bit, right? You have an extended base. That's not something you usually plan for. Every moment off the map is more ground than the enemy team. Blue. Oh. Good block. They stop. Good take there on the Ocean Drake. One of the best ones to have early because it helps you sustain in the lane. And keeps your laning afloat. And Riv, we saw Korean Danny miss that cannon minion. That would have gotten him out on the map faster. I'm just saying. We can, so actually, true, we can true. actually connect a cannon minion that was missed to staying in the base for longer and having to sell a potion. Today was the day. Remember that. What's the day? <laughs> I don't know anymore, man, dude. It's Saturday. Okay. Oh, man. Actually, it's the 9th, right? Right? With the question yeah. mark. <laughs> My dad's birthday tomorrow, I should remember There that. you go. <laughs> we always got to base it off an event. Coming up on 10 minutes in, what is the next event here? We do see Shelly's about to spawn, and maybe a little love finally for oh. this top lane call. The Forge got flashed out. Also has the orange to make it safe. Throws down Cannon Barrage. Calls for the damage, and it looks like he's trying to stay alive for the aggression from Julian, who is going to say, I'm just going to farm these few minions, buddy. He could have saved him. Could have got the kill. They alive. are going to save him. Stumpy's still alive, and Orange is going to be coming up soon as well. Oh, the dump in. It's going to be the kill coming in from Insu, who also has his passive up, even if he went down in the fight. And I think Julian might have wanted to get into that aggression a little bit quicker. What a bit of chaos here. Oh, he's coming out, shuffled back with the Emperor's Divide. Buckzack not liking his positioning anymore as they're about 50% health on the side of Columbia College. 
as Zeno and Julian have just switched up to the top lane. Does Julian keep going? Does he feel like Minsu has left? Oh, he's gonna get stopped! <laughs> what a hit by Julian, but it's not gonna be enough. Maybe in his death, he'll be able to take it down. Stumpy, a new challenger, approaches on both sides. The quarters are flowing, baby, and it's gonna be the bot lane now going in for the fight. Dean gets locked up, knocked back, and they'll disengage this fight. And I think they're just gonna go for Shelly now as nobody really has any more abilities to use. And the original people who are in the top lane are the ones who get left in there after TPing back <laughs> in. And now the Rift Herald started up by Buck Zack. Oh man, that was that was back and forth. That was crazy. The small things made the difference. Stumpy staying alive for so long. But look at this top Potamus. He's alone. He's gonna try to contest this. Wait, the eye's gonna open up. Wait, 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 wait. Boom! Oh! Wait. You can't really tell until somebody grabs yeah, it because they can sit Buck there. Buck Zack got it. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. In the inventory. Wait. Nope. Too far. All right, Not the level that. nine slingshot. All right. So five minute replay, go. <laughs> <laughs> so Stumpy plays this incredibly well, but I actually think that it's just very, very close. So he gets knocked up. Watch the brittle passive. The slow on top of Potamus. Then right there, it looked like the brittle passive didn't actually go off or he didn't get it in time. Nope. Made everything okay. Yeah, he gulped at the end there. Oh, the real right. passive from the Orn didn't actually do anything to off. Stumpy. I think it ticked off right then, which would have been the difference. Which would have meant he either had to use the Orange earlier, or Stumpy wouldn't have stayed as li alive as long. And then Buckzack came in. I thought right here Buckzack was going to like turn and like chop him one more time. Oh. Give him one for the road. <laughs> the alley-oop chomp? Yeah. I thought Zeno was helping him, but <laughs> the knockback in. Then they kind of hang around for a while. Oh, you have teleport? Okay. <laughs> and Julian walks Go back up. in. Oh, that hit was so good. Yeah, but the heal, the heals is huge there, and Julian has to try to run away. His butt sack thought it was all over. He's like, get my bus pass back out. I'm coming back. <laughs> oh, wait, right here. More fights in the bottom side. Absolutely. Oh, Buck Zack's like, hey, get back here. Nice black shield allows Minsu to get in, but can he get out? The slingshot leaves him up the lane without a paddle. As he gets out of the river, that's where he's usually stuck. This time he gets himself into danger with Columbia College. Julian's gonna stop Zeno, says, hey buddy, where are you going? Stops him halfway through. Things might be falling apart a little bit for Illinois here as this chaos we see in the mid game usually favors Columbia College. Yeah, but I like where Columbia College went with that. They went to the bottom side of the map because Stumpy has ultimate and there's no TP for top Potamus. So your GP gets to help the fight. Orn can't do anything to help that. Yeah, Ooh, good and move, so man. It's a good macro move from them to know exactly the side of the map that they should focus. Opposite the GP that just had the TP blown from both those top laners. Quick clear in mid. Shelly giving him heli. They drop down the mid lane turret in a few seconds. Just not even that much of a goldie. The turret obviously going to spread out some global gold and give them a bit It's what they could use. Now coming back here as the core items become finished. Stumpy close to having his. It's actually quite finished as he's had a 0, 1, and 2 lane. A lot of action up there. And that seems to be the story for Columbia College. One lane gets accelerated because the party is brought there. First game it was Julian's. This third game, now it's Stumpy's in the top side. Yeah, and it was Stumpy's in game two as well. But it was funny because Julian actually got a lot of the kills in, That's the, true. in the game two, even though the top lane was the one that was focused. So he ended up absorbing the pressure. But like you said, items now getting completed. The Trinity Force in the top lane for Stumpy. And a the banner, banner of command for Julian in that mid lane, even though they got that mid turret down. So he gets to go affect side lanes, be a nuisance, show up with a banner of command to help Siege and then go back to his lane. So he gets to keep the Azir a bit pinned down here. And so far, Minsu has performed well on this Zac. His ganks have been good, but it's just the difference, like I said, the champions. Like, needs to kind of be not just the champions of the play, it's the shot calling of the team, because Columbia College, they focus a lot on macro, trying to play the game almost from like a, a flowchart perspective of, hey, <laughs> What, what side can we infect? Is the answer yes or no? And then a lot of contingencies here. They seem to have the right answer for most of the situations in the game. Or they at least put you in a very tough situation to answer. Right. Any way they can find kind of an upper hand that they play that role. It doesn't seem like they have to do too much to do it. It's just the way their communication works. That's what makes it so hard to play against them. They all flow together. Here, flowing back. 
a few members. Illinois gets an initiation that they would love to keep going. Julian goes down. Bucksack looking to get to the fight and help his teammates get back out. Korean Danny hitting in from the side here. Can he start to finish off any, though? And no, he cannot. Stumpy gets himself into the fight beautifully with that ultimate and adds a bit to Boo. Yeah, he ulti, but he also walked all the way down, yeah. knowing that his team wanted I to fight. I looked at Teleport, I was like, wait, he's still there, though. Yeah, Teleport only had a few more seconds left on it, so Papapotamus had the wave shoved into him, and then he couldn't actually answer in this fight because the rotation, so great from Columbia College. Seeing Zeno's ultimate there, I thought that could have been the turnaround. Yeah, but I it kind of seems like it was all loaded in the front end and then no yeah. follow up. So he pushes them in. He actually gets black shielded a little late here. So Julian point blank ulties him. He's actually hit <laughs> afterwards. He flashes, but he's already taken a lot of the damage. And now the GP ultimate is allowing Julian to just kind of punch Noob a whole bunch. And Stumpy makes it in time. He gets yeah. one kill. The Glock, one kill with the Cannon Barrage, and there's the turret going down with the help of the banner. Minsu as well, unfortunately, ultimate not connecting with anybody in that fight. So for Zach, for that moment, you're not offering any crowd control. You're kind of like, I just want to get out of this. I don't want to bounce. Let's not party. Oh, wow. I did not expect Buck Zach to be coming out of the fog of war there. Catches at University of Illinois off guard as well. They take position in mid lane, though. This is a great spot for Zeno to be. He can keep the soldiers up. He can keep them fighting. They don't have to worry about too much vision, but can they take the fights that Columbia College is ready to initiate? Columbia College are going to wave clear, and down bottom, they're going to get Evan RL some mm -hmm. solo experience, some solo gold, and they're going to get the TP out of Korean Danny. A little bit of armor for Topopotamus, as you see him building out on the map with the Braum passive. Just looking around at what could be next, that Zeal is finished up for Evan RL, as he gets a little bit more money under his belt, watching him farm up. Waiting for Korean Danny's finish. Remember, Muramana finished up for Evan RL and his Ezreal at 16 minutes in the previous game. This one's close. This one's actually literally like one or two attacks away. So there it's it not, is. not too far off. There it is. Okay. Good time to bring it up. But it also means that he's not able to buy a second tier right now and TP back to lane. That's true. You want to keep it rolling because now he's going to be out on the map for whoever knows how long. And then. And he'll have the tier later, so he's actually just adding time on his three-item power spike here. Uh, the longer he stays out, and doesn't have the gold, so kind of wish it'd come in a little bit earlier. I don't know if something like that is a statistic that has too much RNG to it, but if you could ever kind of zone in and figure out when that longest purchase time is, you'd be like, I should actually spend it. We're between 18 and 22 minutes. I won't go back anytime soon. Ah. Super interesting, right? If you were like, what's the average completion time of my Muramana or Transformation? Yeah, but there's always so much RNG you could be fighting early and have eight kills and do it at nine minutes, right? Yeah. Grant, well, not nine minutes. But you know what I mean. Yeah, you see Korean Danny was trying to recall there, potentially go for a back, but they're keeping pressure on him. They want to focus the bottom side. They have teleports and they have the ultimate again from Whoa. Stumpy. Minsu caught though. Oh, just because you have the black shield on doesn't mean you need to go in. Minsu draws one back. It's going to be a tanky Dean. He feels fine to do this. Bucksack taking the initiation, the aggression from the turret. Nicely done. Possible call of the horn. Forge God goes in. He gets a good knock up. That's onto Bucksack. They can finish that kill. Evan RL, the flash forward. Oh, Soul Shackle broken as they don't want to initiate. They said, we're fine with this kill. We're fine with the pressure. And that's what you need to see them doing, taking a little bit at a time. And they solidify this. Yeah, but look at the top side. It's also going to be a trade of it turrets hurts. here. The GP, Stumpy with the Sterics and the Trinity Force does a lot of damage to these turrets as a split pushers. They're going to have to get two here get going, yeah. on the side of Illinois if they want to actually come out with an advantage here other than just the kill. So you got Voidus, not the best clears from Kog'Maw, and he has to stay back. But Julian says, I'll go forward. A 4v3 situation. Black Shield on Zeno gets himself the safety. Minsu says, I'll go down. I can help the team from passive as well, if he can use that. Julian a few more shots. Shift forward. There's the shield on Bates and Korean Danny for a few more hits. But the soldiers can seal the deal. Stumpy. Oh, Stumpy looking to say, do you want the trial by fire? He gets pushed back, flashes back over the few last hits. He doesn't seem to be able to connect the damage. He wants to so far. Minsu looking to run away. There is the passive as he gets the Bloblets. Noobs able to run away, and they do Wait. <laughs> start to clean up on the kill. Stumpy having a bit of a hard time in this one, but he is able to mop up a few yeah. for Columbia College. He thought that was one of those cool guys. Don't look at explosions. Just I'm going to pop the barrel, go with the blast cone. <laughs> they almost oh, let him man. reform there. It was very close. 
Thought he had a little more damage than he did, but still. Able to turn around the fight with the teleport and to get in on it after shoving that top side. So, Duffy actually performing quite well pretty much across the board, but Julian tried to kind of overplay that fight, I think. Same with Evan. And that's one of the first time we've seen them go for that. Was that and like the Drake fight in the previous game or the first game that we've seen that from Columbia College. So it's uncharacteristic, but the turnarounds are something that are pretty consistent for them. See this one more time. Yeah, Julian, he ends up using his ultimate point blank and it's red again by Noob. Oh, Boom. That Spell shield. Yeah, Evan RL hit by the binding. Can't do anything about it. Minsu makes Dean and Julian get stunned together. And then Evan RL gets hit by the sweep oh. and another binding. Noob played that Noob. Noob played that fight so well. Two Change your name. Two, <laughs> two bindings and then the black shield to prevent Julian from actually getting a really good knockup or point blank ultimate. And back to live on the Rift. Let's see the vision being cleared out here. University of Illinois getting themselves into position to take control of the map. Mid could go down soon. You can see really where the damage is coming from. Stumpy focused in the beginning of the map. Oh, 3 1 and 3 now doing 2400 plus damage in these fights. Everybody's getting caught a little farther out than I feel like they'd like to. 10% HP being taken off here, there, not starting fights with full HP really being a detriment here to these turrets going down. And it will again with this. Julian has to alt out. The pressure is there for University of Illinois. Yeah, and Evan RL, he had to kind of back up a whole bunch and not contribute to this. And isn't that one of the Pugma Chromas? I think it is. I think he's got an eye patch. Yeah. Yeah. I actually haven't seen Pugma in so long. Now like the Chromas. Okay, anyway. Mom. Anyway. A little bit of a fight, Buckzack. Oh my word, Minsu's in. He gets Woo! a huge abduction back, but is there any follow up damage? It looks good, but do they have the targets they need? It's kind of the wall that Columbia College is able to fight over. What an Emperor's Divide! But he puts himself too deep. The follow up pressure is almost lacking one after the other. There's great initiations but they just have to follow each other a little closer. And that, I think, is the straw that breaks the camel's back. That is a five for one. That yes. is an ace for Columbia College. And I assume that's the Baron here is they're going to go straight towards that. There's no TP except for Korean Danny, who's up in 15 seconds. But I think they have the damage here. We will see. Slowly going down. You can actually see Baron like I'm healing a little bit, too. Down to six. 1,018 now, nobody on their heels. This is gonna be uncontested. They fought well for it. One more second. Evan's up. Nice job. Nice block there. Yeah, good idea to block. Allow everybody's recalls to go through. We'll see this one more time. They start heading down. You can see there's no vision as well. So Columbia College is kind of coming in. Seeing yeah, a little bit. Watch Julian. Julian zones two people here, preventing Zeno from getting into the fight. So even though three people get pulled in, they all just basically get to focus down the University of Illinois members. And now Zeno gets to get oh. into the fight. He was zoned by Julian for most of that. And if he were there to combo off with the Zack, push them away, keep his team alive for longer, and contribute damage, then it would have been a very different fight. And it feels so weird as an Azir to be separated from a fight like that because when you Emperor's Divide in, you haven't had your soldiers set up in the right spot. Yeah. Like, you want to keep them up all the time. So it becomes even more unfortunate. And Julian is just getting in the mind of Zeno right now to stop him from doing that. Completely close scores from that mid lane as well. 3-3-3-3-3-4. Three, 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 There's been separation between these two from game to game, and they're really, really trying to put their best foot forward here this time. Yeah, and this was the counter pick again for Julian. They had selected the red side for Columbia College right. to try and get that counter. And they got the counter pick pretty much the top lane, the mid lane, and then also, I believe, the bottom lane here, too, where they picked that Kog'Ma after they knew that it was already Ezreal plus Morgana. Yeah, phase, phase two first pick, Kog'Ma. They got pretty much what they wanted across the lanes. Now, Evan RL in a position to carry with the magic damage. Stumpy definitely able to carry with the physical damage right now. So far, we're seeing why that GP was his number two most picked champion. And I assume that GP during the regular season was banned a lot more than NAR was. Yeah. So it's kind of play Very GP true. when you can get your hands on it type uh, situation. Top lane push from Evan RL. He's got a beautiful wall of defense that is his team in the middle of the jungle. Jungle, you get this close to the base, you can go very quickly from lane to lane by using your enemy's path. And now, 
Julian, they have the Baron buff on Columbia College. They have the Banner of Command. There's the Banner of Command minion. Columbia College, 25 and a half minutes in. They're looking at 8,000 gold leads. They want to go to the finals. They want to make this a clean three. Yo, Nimitsu. And engaged. pull the trigger. Can he get the abduction in? The ult goes off, but he goes down, and the team is being chased out of the fight. Turret is down. Zeno looks to fall shortly after, but shuffles to Ooh. safety. There is the hit as Zeno does fall, and they have lost Minsu. The base is open for Columbia College, and they're looking to make the final touches on this. 26 minutes into the game. They continue to repeat the fastest game times here at the College Championship, and they are opening up the inhibitor. 16 to 7 with an over 10,000 gold lead. It is going to be Top Apotamus doing what he can with Korean Danny to stop it. The first Nexus turn in the eyes of Columbia College here in our first semifinal of the day. Top Apotamus with the crowd control. The knockup means there's no damage coming through, but as soon as Columbia College hits the ground, they are back to firing for the victory. The last Nexus turret goes down. Columbia College in 3 0 fashion will get their shot at College Champion. 3-0 for Columbia College. They say we should have ended first in the Northern Conference. They righted the wrongs. They took down the team that took down Maryville. And now they're moving on to the finals. Absolutely incredible. And a statement as well going through it. You know, feeling a little rough sometimes in the early game, but they adapt very fast to any pressure that the team can put on them. And then they bring it back to their own game where they are in the driver's seat. And Columbia College show once again very fast game times and another victory here at the college championship. You see, they passed that trophy. Can't lift it up just yet. No, they have no, one don't more touch. Don't best touch. of five to win before they can hoist that trophy. And Columbia College, we said it before, they spent a lot of time before they started this program. Finally, the esports program, League of Legends scholarships is up for them. Yeah. Now, this is the year where they can kind of uh, give, bring a lot of validation to the program and say, yeah, yes, it's the right choice to start it off. Because they're getting results so far, making semifinals, especially on this side of the bracket, too. is nothing to be scoffed at. This is fantastic for them. And the fact that Columbia College wasn't really on the map before yeah. in terms of you know, League of Legends, it was mostly UBC, little UCI, and then RMU. But but Mary it was Bill. known that Columbia College kind of had an aura about them. We see the coach coming over because saying, hey, I think this is actually going to be a really good thing. Drake said, I am on board with this college. It looks like they can go far. And it seems like everybody there is together in that choice. They did a really good job of scouting talent as well. Yeah. Taking two members from RMU, the coach, Florida State University Midlaner, and then adding on both Dean, or sorry, uh, yes, Dean, and then having the mm -hmm. top laner, of Stumpy, who has been an absolute pleasure to be on, to be honest, it's to been, watch him play. It's been crazy. We see all these tanks towards the top lane. He keeps bringing out the aggression as well. Looking at Columbia College as a team, five challenger players there. To give credit to what Illinois was able to bring to the table as well as, yes, they did go out with the loss, but seeing the freshman in that mid lane, Zeno, play around those members as a challenger player himself, Illinois has a very bright future. As we said, they're lo losing three of those senior members, which can hurt a team, but it looks great in the future for them. Yeah, and Illinois, they took down Maryville. They pretty much did what Eight they set to out. 8-1 seed. The huge upset, the 2-0 fashion there. And now they are knocked out. Their tournament ends here. But Columbia College, on the other hand, like we were saying, they have a very bright future. And this finals you know, is going to be heated. We'll have to see. They play either UC Irvine or Maryland. We'll have to see that game coming up next. But to hear more from the squad of Columbia, let's send it down to Avali and the victorious mid laner. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Julian. Congratulations on slither slithering your way into the finals with that amazing Cassiopeia play in game one and game two. How were you able to find such success on that champion? Uh, yeah, so Cassio is my best champion by far. Uh, I kind of abused it to rank one. So I'm surprised they gave it to me two games in a row. Uh, and I expect uh, any team we play against in the finals to ban it out against me. Speaking about that, you did hit rank one in Challenger earlier this year. How were you able to fit that many solo queue games into your academic calendar? Uh, it's definitely not easy. And, uh, you know, I gave up a lot of my free time to do it. So, uh, but I'm glad I did because it was worth the effort. How are you and the team able to prepare coming into today? Uh, basically, we boot camped for a week in LA beforehand. 
uh, because we had all been on summer vacation. So we had to meet up and start playing again because a lot of us actually hadn't played for like maybe a month or so. So we came early, uh, prepped hard for this tournament, and clearly our, our results are showing. Now you've had actually a lot of experience playing on the stage, scouting grounds, you hit rank one challenger, now you're going into the college finals. What's next from you and when are we gonna see you hit the LCS? Uh, as soon as possible, please, any teams, hit me up <laughs> ASAP. Drop your Twitter, drop your Twitch. Julian Mid. There you go, Julian Mid. Well, Julian, congratulations again on your victory. And for more on the game, let's hear from the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, Avila. Yeah, not about ASAP. Maybe he's got, got some finals to play, uh, as you brought that one up. <laughs> Sign him up right now. <laughs> yeah, they got a sub right there. Right there. Yeah. Uh, either way, 3-0 uh, victory. Columbia College did it. One Julian, one formerly Zatsmod in the mid lane. Couple of Cassipia games. Scion to win. That's how every mid lane, I think, wants to win their semifinal matchup. Just play Scion and go like 0-4-5 and five in your last match. That's... That's the epitome. I mean, it's, it's the, the good team victory. Everyone yeah, works absolutely. together. That's what it is. <laughs> Prove that everyone else did a good stuff. But yeah, you were mentioning you you liked the draft a lot here for Columbia. Yeah, I actually thought the draft was really well done by Columbia College. They have mixed damage, so magic from the Kogma uh, top lane. They have the gang playing for physical damage, and then they actually have a competent front line through Trundle with the ultimate Scion. Obviously, not only is a good pick into the Azir, but is also part of that front line. And then they have uh, Cog Brom as the bot lane. That's a pretty potent bot lane overall. You have a lot of pick potential with the long range of Kogma and the stun of Braum. Now that was interesting that they got that too because they elected to go back to red side after a successful game too. Uh, I thought that was really cool because they could kind of feel some of the bans coming with that Cassio ban. They wanted to make sure Julian ended up in a good matchup probably this time around. And once they see the Azir, like you said, they can go for that Scion. So I thought it was a pretty intelligent draft, not only what champions they picked, but the decision that they made at the very beginning of the game to actually go back onto red side. Yeah, also interesting, you know, Interestingly enough, the uh, Cassio ban came up when they picked when Il Illinois picked a champion that's actually right, pretty right. good into Cassiopeia, right? The Azir yeah. with the long range is able to stuff out the Cassio during lane phase and isn't threatened as much. Uh, so I thought that that was a little bit wonky, but uh, overall, still good draft by Columbia. All right, so let's uh, talk about some of the fights that we did actually see here. Our one replay we're going to show is a 22 minute ace. Uh, that Columbia College gets through, turns it into Baron afterwards, and this is the, the one that really opened the game and almost closed it out in a way. Yeah, yeah a this, couple, well, oh, you can go for it. This is a little weird uh, positioning from Korean Danny. He shifts forward as the Zac brings everyone back. The two backliners are kind of playing away from each other, and so that split fight allows Columbia to just focus one at a time. This sick Azir ulti is kind of offset by the fact that he gets blown up immediately. Uh, but I think the key point here is that the positioning of the two Illinois carries was a little disjointed as one is over the wall. And so they can, the people at Columbia could just focus uh, one of them down much easier and then just clean it up after that. Yeah, I mean, they, they could try and fight front to back. They were down a little bit in gold, as you can see at the gold graph. But at the end of the day, your art, if your shit, Ezreal's on one side and your Azir's on the other, it's a completely split fight and the enemy team was able to kind of run them down. Very close, very good performance by Illinois, all things considered, but sure. uh, it was just kind of running into Columbia College, who a lot of people before the tournament were saying was probably the second or third favorite. Both teams from the North yeah. uh, were heavily prioritized. Yeah. Maryville ended up dropping early, but the two other behemoths being Columbia and UC Irvine. Yeah, so uh, tournament to some degree playing out to expectations other mm -hmm. than the, uh, the obvious Illinois upset, but still top four. Pretty solid for them. So let's move our discussion to uh, the very end here. Where is uh, Columbia College going from here? Like, do you think they have what it takes to win the finals if we assume it's UCI for them, even without any Cassie PA? Julian said he expects to get banned. Uh, what do you think is going to be the, the ceiling for them? Uh, I think they can feel pretty confident coming into these finals. Obviously, you have to feel good after 3-0 and after uh, what their games again in the quarterfinals. Like, I don't think they've dropped a game yet, if I recall right. correctly. they've not. So... You know, not dropping a game in this kind of tournament it actually feels pretty good. Um, I think that they can go into this finals with a lot of confidence, but not necessarily with the swagger of, like, if they're facing Irvine. I think that's still a really tough matchup. They actually have a mid and uh, top laner that can match them and contest mm -hmm. that. Uh, and obviously the bot lane has LCS experience at, at Irvine with uh, Latman and Bloodwater. Yeah. So uh, I think that it's going to be a lot closer than this, and they should still be prepared despite feeling good. Like, take the night, celebrate a little bit, but sure. you should still... Not too much. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. All right, well, uh, now we're going to send it back to Avli to hear from the bot laner for Columbia College. 
Thanks, guys. I'm here with Evan RL. Congratulations on that victory. How excited are you to make it to the finals? Oh, man. Since last year when we got third, fourth, I've just, I've wanted to win this whole thing, right? And this is obviously the step we had to take, and I'm, I'm so excited to play in the finals. And you just mentioned how many years have you been chasing that trophy? This is, this is my third year in collegiate, so I'm hoping this is the one. Oh, here's hoping. Well, before the game, uh, we had a message from you basically saying that you thought that Columbia had the strongest macro in the entire tournament. Why do you think that is? Uh, I think that that's everything we've been working on because we didn't want to come in here and just like fight randomly and just sort of happen to win. We want to make sure we're in control of our fate and we're able to win based off what we know. Now, you and Buck Zach both transferred this year over from RMU. Was the transfer difficult academically? Uh, I wouldn't say the transfer academically was too difficult. I actually switched my major, so I had kind of easy classes. But um, no, it, it was fine. Columbia has been great to us. They've, they've been awesome and given us all the support we need to get where we are now. Um, how did you two integrate into the team? That, that was a little bit of a process. Uh, actually, Julian came in when I came in, so it was kind of a three-person integration. So there wasn't too much foundation left of the team before. So it was pretty easy. It was like a brand new team. Wonderful. Well, we see UC Irvine and Maryland setting up behind us. You play the winner of them tomorrow in the finals. Who do you think you're going to face up against? Uh, I think it's safe to bet on UC Irvine to win, but I don't know. Maryland could just get another crazy win and, and maybe get to the finals too. Well, congratulations again on your victory. Evan, back to the desk. Thank you very much, Avali, and thank you for that interview on short notice, everything like that. So expect that UCI final, as we kind of all did coming in. We already talked about the fact that those two northern teams were the ones expected. It is uh, these guys here with Columbia College who made it all happen. Uh, do want to talk to the fact that uh, when it comes to promoting to the finals, each player in Columbia showed that they've come for the crown, but one player in particular did stand out, which is why we are rewarding Julian, player of the series here for this one. The double cast Kia games, obviously quite good. This time under Troy. Pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, the first two games really earned him this uh, award, especially with the ability to kind of outplay what were starting as bad situations for him. Previously, in that other clip, turning around that gank, getting it to trade. Here, kind of baiting out the big engage by University of Illinois and surviving through it very critically, was able to get his team a lot of the advantages in the series. Last game, got to kind of limp it in with the Scion. Yeah, he's showing that. I think that's still good, though, because he's showing that he's willing to kind of sacrifice for his mm -hmm. team, play that tank, be the frontliner, instead of always having to play the like kiting mage or control mage that has to take control of the game. Yeah, I don't know. You enjoy that 18% damage <laughs> as opposed to the 30%? Hey, if you're feeling, if you're feeling good about your teammates and yeah. you can trust them and whatnot, you know, that, that earns player of the series. Maybe some people itself. are less selfish than I am. I don't know. I'm like, give me those damage numbers. <laughs> At least the first two games, like 90%-ish KP. Like, he obviously yeah, was putting yeah. on a really good show for that one. So, uh, props to him for that one. Um, yeah, player of the series, I think, very well deserved, right? One of the, one of the big sort of stars of this, this show. Uh, we expected Evan RL to do quite a lot. We expected Stumpy to do quite well. Like, those guys seem to all show up. Uh, pretty nicely in the series, so those players we're going to care about for their final bout. Do you want to check in on how over under went? Do we need to? Let's go. Uh, if we need to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we could skip it. Game time under one hour thirty six minutes. Our target was one forty five. So uh, one zero to start, and the rest of the stats don't matter. I believe is what this is. <laughs> I, I uh, want the next one. If we're going to do this, yeah. We need okay. To... Well, that's what is yeah, KDA. Yeah. It was at fifteen. And 14 is what we reached, so I was okay. close to winning, but under was the accurate yep, answer. You so know, I, I got under. Yeah, yeah I got under. So, right. so, so now we're all tied at one apiece, and then the final vote was for uh, Dragon Slain. We already knew after game two what the answer was. <laughs> In fair, I chose seven and a half. Yeah. <laughs> you chose an impossible answer. That's a non-answer, answer, <laughs> yeah. so I'm ahead of you, 50%. But yeah, obviously, uh, our best analyst, uh, we're going to be kicking off the, at the end it. of this one. I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't be shown up, so we'll be replacing him after this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, JJ will go 2-0 and he'll <laughs> Yeah, He'll go 0-3. We'll make sure he needs to protect yeah. well, our, our legacy here. So I guarantee he won't. He needs uh, to protect the guest legacy here to yeah. make sure that we can keep it going. Yeah, especially the University of Toronto. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. happening is they're not even at this tournament. Otherwise, so uh, no. prop to that. But we are stepping away. <laughs> when we return, our next two finalists take to the stage at the University of Maryland. Challenge the University of California, Irvine. We'll see you here after the break. <laughs> he could have saved him. Could have got the They are going to save him. Stumpy's still alive, and Orange is going to be coming up soon as well. And Danny hitting in from the side here. Can he start to finish off any? though, and no, he cannot. Stumpy, do you want the trial by fire? He gets pushed back, flashes back over the few last hits. He doesn't seem to be able to connect the damage he wants to so far. Minshew looking to run away. There is the passive as he gets the blob blitz. I'm low. Azir? 
Finish his ear. Yeah, Q. I'm, I can't blow up on him. Yeah, work, 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 work. Work. That's his ear flash. Are we able to Baron? No, uh, we don't have the damage. Columbia College in 3-0 fashion will get their shot at College Champion.